didn't allow how to say, oh well, I don't like me. Um, well, I mean, again, I don't want our father to grow and learn friendships and the things that I've dealt with here most recently. My situa- situations change. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Um, I'm back. I just want to touch bases on friendships, whether it's failed friendships, friendships that you um, still have to this day. If you want to know if you should go back and rekindle some of those friendships or find a different way to um, talk about some of your problems, things of that nature. I'll let you in. I'll tell you how I dealt with some of those things and overcame some of those things. And I'll also tell you about the ones where it's just like, fuck it. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, let's dive on in. I have uh, three best friends. I know somebody's like, oh my God, that's a lot. No, because it's, it's not. They just all play different parts. I love all of them. I love all of them so, so much. I met them in elementary school and I met them, some of them in middle school. So if you know me and if you follow me on my Instagram or just in my life period, you will know who these people are to me. All right. So let's start off first with my um, girl best friend. Her name is Toya. And I don't get them to get mad about this part about me putting their names out there because, you know, this is my shit. You know, see me. But if you're my friend, you won't. <laughs> but um, her name is Toya. We met in elementary school um, and we've been thick as thieves ever since. I will say that um, me and Toya, long time we've had an argument. Last time we had an argument, we were 12 and it was over some goddamn cookies from the Royal Farm store. I don't know what it happened, but all I know is either she got mad or I got mad because the bitch wanted one of my cookies or something. I don't know. We were walking past our um, elementary school with some other friends. It was late at night and we was going back and forth for these fucking cookies. So <laughs> um, that's the only time, you know, we're both grown now and we don't argue. She lives long distance. However, she does a great job at... Um, keeping in contact with me i keep in contact with her we're very up to date and up to speed what goes on in each other's lives i was in her wedding i'm the godmother of her children and things like that so we have a remarkable relationship um my guy best friend his name is turkey burger that's the name that i gave him but um i love him dearly um We've been friends forever. We met in like I think middle school or something like that, and we've just been there. We've had one spat, you know, because we're both Aquariuses and we can be bullheaded, um, stubborn, extremely stubborn. But um, that's it. I, I love him to death, and we back like it never left. My other friend is Chris. Christian, he'll be, we go in school, I'll be in school and I'll be like, hey yo, we boys! So that's the shit we would do all yelling the whole way, he's getting yelled at by the teachers, even to this day when I see him. He and uh, Turkberger are very close and um, I'm close to all of them. So technically I really only have two best friends because I combine Turkey Burger and Chris and so on, if that makes sense. But um, Chris is my emotional friend. So he's the guy that is the guy, but he's the guy that still knows that I'm a girl. So if I go to him with some things, he, he's a little he's he's a little more sensitive, like, oh yeah, well try this, or you know, don't worry about it. Versus Turkey Burger is just like me. Well the old me or whatever. And he's like, oh fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. No matter fuck that shit. Mm, yeah, alright, whatever. Yeah, well, you should have known better, you did this, da da da. That's turkey burger. Turkey burger. We all have a turkey burger. A friend like that. Um, so yeah, that's them. So let's begin. If you have friends or 
um, in situations where the friendship is one-sided, um, maybe you should change that. If you can't benefit or if the friendship isn't beneficial to all parties involved, then maybe you should do like some reevaluating or go to them and say, hey, um, I'm feeling like I'm the only one in this friendship that does X, Y, and Z. Or I'm always here, I'm concerned, I'm considerate, I'm wondering about you and what you're doing. And you just like, you only call me with something wrong or when you want to borrow or whatever it may be. Um, other than those three, I have other people that, um, of course, I'm, I know and that I'm friends with and that have known me um, about the same amount of time that they've known me or if not longer. Um, however, they are the ones that just stick out in my life the most. Um, I don't believe in distance and life takes a hold of it. I said that at the beginning because I know a lot of people say that and they use that. Um, but we all know people keep who they want in their lives. People keep in contact and keep up to date and check in with who who they want. We all know that. Case in point, you got the dude that you pay attention to and you got the dude that you just fucking be like, why is he even calling my phone? And the same thing goes for guys as well. They do the same thing. Um, so, yeah, my friend lives long distance. And like I said, she's in every aspect of my life. Um, I don't care what's going on with me. She's going to get on 95 and she is going to come full fucking throttle. But that goes both ways. If I can't come or if something is going on, she is very understanding. She's not demanding. She'll FaceTime me. She'll fucking call me through Facebook because she got rid of her iPhone because she fucking hated it. So she refused to get one. Or we'll do IMO, Tango, when all that shit was going on. We would do that. Like, we stay up to date. Um, I still go see her mom. I'm there for her mom. She's, you know, she's there. Like, that's my baby. I love her to death. You know, I wouldn't trade her for for a million fucking pieces. Um, so, if you have friends that are out of town or that you're not in contact with, like, I think that it's an excuse because I personally have a friend where... We have two different lives and we live in two different states and we are as close as we were, if not closer than we were when we were children. So um, kudos to all of you guys that have those long lasting friendships where it's it's equal. It's not a one sided thing. So before it used to be really, really hard for me to um, grasp the fact that I know a lot of people and I had a lot of people that were in my life and that came in out of my experience that I have helped or that I've been there for or have been there for me at times. It's just like, whoa, what happened to the, the friendship or whatever the fuck you want to call it? I don't know. What, you know, what happened to it? Um, yeah, whatever. So... I had to learn that I couldn't take it personal. Like, you you can't take it personal. Sometimes the shit is personal. You feel me? Sometimes the shit is personal. But what people, I think people forget to realize that, um, is a friendship is a relationship. It is a form of relationship. You know, you don't got to call and talk to each other every day. You know, you don't got to do this, that, and the third all the time. But it is a form of a relationship. And I'm not saying that you got to talk every day. Just pay your friendship bill. Shoot a text, an email. Write a comment under the picture. Write on your page or something like, hey, I'm just paying my friendship bill. I'm thinking about you today. Love you. Um, I don't talk to my best friends every day. I'll send them a text, though. Sometimes I say, hey, I love you. Have a good day. Um, or, hey, what's going on? And sometimes they may not respond back to me until a couple of days later. But okay, that that's fine. At least we, you know, we stay connected. Um, so you can't always take it personal. Um, you have to embrace all of it. Everything that comes, everything that comes with a friendship. Now, the definition of a friendship, according to the dictionary, it is a mutual 
feeling and shared affection um, amongst two people. It's something like that. I'm trying to do it at the top of my head, but I looked it up before and that's what it is. Now, the part that stuck out to me is mutual affection. If we don't have mutual affection or mutual anything, then there's something wrong with that picture. Like something wrong with that friendship. I've had a friendship um, before, not just one. So let me say I've had. I've had friendships where if you were down and you were sad, I'm coming over there. Hey, what's going on? I'm calling. I'm checking up on you. You know, all of that. I'm there. If you call me at the crack of a dawn saying you got a flat tire or your fucking lights cut off or whatever the fuck, I'm up on my bed and go. Boom. But I noticed that um, when it came time for me, for me to need, it was like those same people. It was like, oh, no, well, not right now. Oh, well, I'll do it, but you got to come to me or, well, I don't have or, you, all, you know, all those excuses that we hear when it comes time for you to call on someone. Those fucking excuses. Yeah. And I just say, well, damn, I don't do that when you call me. So why the fuck are you always doing that shit to me? Like, that ain't cool. So I let stuff like that go on for a while and all of that. Just didn't pay any attention. But as I began to grow um, and pray for those things to be removed from my life and those people to be removed from my life, Honey, let me tell you, I can literally name all five, maybe six people that call me, text me, check up on me, all of that. I'm talking about friend-wise, and I don't use that friend word a lot. Um, some people do, but I don't. I don't use that friend word a lot. And maybe in that five or six, I'm pushing it because like three or four are my relatives. You feel me? So that should tell you something too. So out of everyone that I've helped, out of everyone that I've encountered, out of everyone that I allowed into my space, a lot of those people have disappeared or fell by the wayside. What I did to overcome that, I wrote everyone down on a sheet of paper i'm telling you what i did you don't have to do it but i'm i think everyone should at least try this okay i wrote everyone name down on a piece of paper that i was friends with or things like that or who i considered a, a friend and i wrote all their names down on a piece of paper and i listed all of their functions and the roles that they played in my life like what was their function what are they to me i did that i made that list like where everyone gonna... when i mean that list <laughs> went from being like this long <laughs> to like this long i mean i was fucking done I, I had to laugh like i had to laugh because i'm like damn i really get to see that a lot of these people that i call my friends or that i was there for like you really didn't hold no huge factor in my life so cool so after i did that after i made the list i also went ahead and dissected it you know that's how i got it down to be so little and um, become appreciative to those who are still in my life. Um, I reached out to some people where it was like, um, don't mind me, I'm going to put some stuff, something in the trash. Um, reached out to some of those people where it was like, um, I wanted to say something. I didn't necessarily know exactly what I was going to say or how I was going to say it, but I wanted to say something as in, hey, you know, especially those where something may have occurred or whatever, which isn't many, but or where 
people made up shit that happened. And I'm like, what? You lying. Just say you don't fuck with me. Like, you you, you be surprised with a motherfucker on makeup. Um, but, okay. So I did that. I reached out. Um, I apologized. And it, it wasn't an apology. I made my peace with it. Because I am a very impulsive person. I have to act on how I feel. I never steer from how I feel based off of what you feel. So if you say, oh, well, I don't like you and I don't want to be your friend anymore or I don't love you, I'm not going to be like, well, I don't love you neither and I don't want to be your That ain't me. Like, I'm too old for that. I'm going to say, okay, cool. Sorry, you feel that way. Now, these are things that I've experienced. So this is why I'm speaking on it. So I had reached out to people. I sent um, texts. I even called I've even asked to meet some or um, have lunch, anything like that. Now, some did um, reach out back to me and we talked about some things and we left them where they were. And it's like, hey, no love lost. I love you. And that's what it is. And then you do have some that hold on to this thing called pride or don't want to admit when they're wrong or don't want to see when they did something wrong. And it's okay because, again, I didn't do it for you to tell me what you did wrong. I didn't do it for me to say, well, you did this. And if, remember that time? I ain't do it for that. I did it because I wanted to see who you were to me and tell you how I felt. If something happened, I fucking apologize and I'm moving on and I Forgive it. So, I had um, a best friend before. So, I thought it was my best friend. You know, I said that because we did everything together. We were cool. You know, we met late, my later years in life. Um, and we did everything together. I, I still say I'm the mother. <laughs> well, not the mother. I still say I'm the godmother to... Um, her children, I don't think she would consider me to be that, you know, anymore. I don't know. I like, I don't really know how that shit work. Like, it's like, if I have a baby with you and you don't want to be with me, I can't say you're not the father, like, <laughs> or the baby not yours. Cause once upon a time, I fucking had a baby with you. So with this situation, I, um, I still say that I have two other God children. Outside of the ones that I have with my best friend, Toya. Um, I reached out to her as well. I couldn't tell you what happened. I probably, I really couldn't. Um, I could tell you what she said happened. But I really couldn't tell you what happened. Because to me, I was me. And it didn't happen. And, um... It was just crazy, you know, if I, me just sitting here thinking about it. But again, so she may say I'm not their godmother any longer. But again, like I said, I don't know how that work. I reached out. It wasn't because of how I felt about her, but it was like, okay, these are my god kids. I know them, um, especially the oldest. I loved him. Like, I still do. I tried to fix that. Um, it, I'm going to be back up. So it was a time where she admitted, she called me and she admitted like, um, she was wrong. She don't know what happened either, but Hey, she want to be back in her life. And of course me being me back then, I was like, okay, that's fine. But let me, let me tell you what you did because what you did and how you made me feel and it is. And again, when you do that to somebody, people, people feel attacked, you know, and she was like, damn, you really know how to fucking pour salt on the wound. But it wasn't that. It was just the fact that it was like, how am I going to allow you to be back in my space or feel this way when I really did nothing to you when I don't even know what happened to our friendship to begin with? But again, I was younger. So moving along. So I reached out and um, saw, I think, like my godson had like graduated or something like that. And these are all true events. Um, he had graduated or something like that. And I was I was hurt. 
I was like, damn, I know me and you ain't cool, but I came for y'all. Like, I don't put children in the middle of anything. Like, that's just me, though. I don't I, I don't put children in the middle of anything um, when it comes to stuff like that. And I wanted, I would have been there regardless if she would have spoke to me, regardless of anything not. So I, I reached out. I was like, damn, like, yo, I know me and you not the best of friends or you feel how you feel about me, but... You could have told me about this. I'd have came. You know what I'm saying? You know, she responded with a, oh, well, I ain't your friend no more. And I ain't want to be phony. All right. Whatever. But that was the response. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, once upon a time, you felt something in me that made you consider me not to be the godmother to one, but to both of your children. So I really couldn't have been that bad because you did it twice. You understand? Um, and I didn't get that. I didn't understand it, but you know, she had her reasons for doing what she did. I still, against my better judgment for a little while, reached out. I brought Christmas gifts. I'm not going to come to your house unannounced. I'm not going to just pop up. Like that's just not what I'm going to do. I brought Christmas gifts. Um, I still had them. I just recently had gotten rid of them. And mind you, this was like some years ago that this shit happened. So I still was reaching out and buying gifts and I called, you know. But it was like it had gotten to the point, excuse me, where I saw that she wasn't really open to it. Like she really could take it or leave it if I was around in their lives or not. And um, I would ask to get them and things like that. Um, we did make a date for her to come meet me one time to get the Christmas stuff. But, you know, she never showed. I didn't call her. I didn't see what happened. You know, anything anything like that. That bothered me. That, that bothered me for a while. Because um, I love my God kids. Like, I do. Like, I know them. Especially the oldest. You know, I was really, really there. For him and helped her with him um, sometimes. Um, my ex, you know, that I was with, he um, helped and babysat one time so she could go to work and things like that. So yeah, like we were really, really cool. We were. She was the first friend that I ever brought like some shoes or some shit. But um, and she would buy the same for me. So um, as time went on, I I just was like. You got Candace, you gotta leave that shit alone. Like, you have to come to terms with it. You have to leave it alone. You can't push the issue. You can't throw yourself into somebody's life that don't want you there, regardless of the connection or what you have with them or who these children are to you. You have to take it in and fucking keep it moving. And that's what I did. That's what I chose to do. Um, I haven't reached out and I couldn't tell you how long. Um, do I plan on it? No, because um, I'm okay with it because I know I didn't do anything in this situation and I'm pretty sure you'll hear about it later on because like I said, I'm going to touch bases on a lot of things um, and a lot of these things are repetitive situations or that have happened with some of the same people or if not different people. So yeah, I came to terms with that and I dealt with that. I left that alone. Like I just left it alone. Then I had a friend where... Um, she only would call me when she would be going through something. And we, you know, we all, I'm pretty sure these people that I'm named, you know, that I'm talking about, you may have had them in your life too. You could be like, God damn, you know, she ain't lying. Um, so yeah, she would only call me when something was going on. Um, I'm not mad with her at all. Not one bit. Um, we didn't have a beef. We didn't have a falling out. Life just happened. Um, or should I say, I got fed up at that same my list, but, um, she would only call me when something happened or she needed something. And if I would say, oh, you only call me when something's wrong or, um, another thing too, if you begin to notice these people left, you make your list and they reach out to you and they text you or they call you and you answer the phone, what's wrong? What you need? What you want? You only call me when you want something. Like, people really don't want to hear that. Because if a lot of people had to face 
who they really really were and what they truly do they couldn't handle that shit and, and a lot of times when you have to face yourself you don't like it so that's what i would do to her and um it would be like, oh my god why are you always doing that and then it's like no it's like i'm not trying to be a bitch i'm not trying to be smart it's just that i'm not a procrastinator or a bullshitter don't bullshit me or think you got text and talk to me to get up to what you want yo what's up say what it is because that's how i am so she would do this all the time and often so um one time she did it and um it wasn't necessarily that she did it it was what she said she had called herself checking up on me one time and um i was like hey what's up i was regular through the text like hey what's up and she was like, oh, um, what you been doing? You know, the only way I know that you're okay or how you're doing is if I see you on Snapchat or Instagram, you know, through social media. Really? So you just going to say that's the only way you know I'm okay? That was a problem for me. <laughs> if the only way you know that I'm okay... It's because you can go on my social media account and we all know people will make you believe what they want to believe or people will post what they want you to see and things of that nature. But if the only way you're saying you're my friend for all these years, that the only way you know what's going on with me is through social media and you're checking up on me because I ain't posted in a while. What? But you can call me when you need something or you can call me and ask me a question or you can call me in whatever and I'm there though. So, you know, I own who I am because I'm just a good person. I can be mean as a rattlesnake, but I'll give you the motherfucking shirt off my back. But that's the only way you knew. So, I mean, just think about it. If you had someone that's really, really close, think about somebody that's really, really close to you or that you really have a relationship with or that you've known for a long time. And if they said to you, the only way they know that you're okay is through social media and they have your phone number because they use it for everything else. You would feel some kind of way too. So, I didn't get upset. I didn't get angry. I just left that person alone as well. I um, don't wish no harm or anything like that. But it's like, okay, like, no. I, I damn sure don't need to be continuing to have you around. If that's the only thing you, whatever. No. Um, and um, what else? Another time I had a friend. I um, helped him. And we also was like, dealing with each other too. Mm-hmm. But um, I helped him. He, when I met him, he was going through like a lot. You know, life took its course. You know, I can't, I won't go into detail, but life took its course, and I was there. Was it a happy go lucky, a hundred percent good or like friendship thing? No. Was this probably some shit I could have worked on that he could worked on? Absolutely. Um, I think we were cool and everything was good until um, I guess feelings got involved, or you know, again trying to think. I was going to change or something like that I, for one i had just came out of a like i said a really really horrible 17 year situation i don't just dive back into things but i helped this person a lot and they helped me too but um you know when i wrote the list my side weighed more than theirs and um i was there i helped them i helped them with their kids i helped them with themselves whether it was getting finding them a job or different things like that I helped this person um this person had came into my life at a rough time when I couldn't even help myself but I found a way to help them I didn't have much but I took from myself to help them and um I don't regret anything I did because I look at it as me sowing my seeds like I said before um you do good into the world and it'll come back to you now not everybody that you help or that you do good for is gonna give you a same give you the same benefit it's not gonna give you the same effect like you i had to realize my blessing don't come from me helping or being there for these people my blessings 
come from God, the one and only. So I had to realize that. And um, we ended and stopped being friends. It was ugly. It, it was it was extremely ugly. More so like I think it was like a cat and mouse game on um, top, like a like a tug of war type situation. And for long for for a while I, I was a bitch. I was a straight up bitch, you know. But I was a good bitch. And and <laughs> I'm literally like, what that mean? I'm talking about like in the sense of I was mean and I was like nasty or whatever, but on the other side, I still was there for you, if that makes sense. Like, I still did anything. My attitude did not change me from being there for you or being your friend. I may not have been able to display it properly or things like that at times, but that's what I did. And that's how I dealt with it because, again, I was coming from a hurt place. And you know what they always say, hurt people hurt people. So, um, yeah, I was there for him. We were cool. Um, and... Now today, um, I couldn't tell you what he's doing. Um, I, I, I really couldn't. I couldn't tell you not one thing about him. Not one, not one single thing about him. Not one. Um, I reached out to him as well. Because like I said, I made the list and there's things like that. Yeah, and if your side outweighs my side, that's fine. And it was somewhere my side outweighed their side or where we were neck to neck. And I was like, damn, bitch, you got to apologize. So that's what I did. I um, reached out, um, said my part. Um, and my I think it was tooken. Um, oh, back up. Tooken is not a word. It was taken another way. And I was like, well, what the fuck did you just read? So I actually did a little snap thing on that on my page a while ago on my Instagram. And it's on my um, channel as well. Because I'm like, what the fuck did you read? Like, I even had to read it a couple times to some other people. And they were like, well, what the hell did he read for him to respond that way? So, again, it was like, you know, all right, cool. Um, no hard feelings, but all right, I'm good. And it wasn't, And it wasn't about if they were good or not. It was about me. So, I didn't get offended by it. I just was like, okay, cool, thanks. I know. But all right, but with that incident, you know, it was a person too that was like, "Oh, I love you. Um, I'm in love with you. Um, I'll be there. You know, I know you just whatever. You know, whatever. Crack of shit. Um, but I feel like um, situations like that, uh, it can be like toxic, and it's not healthy." Um, however, the friendship side of it, like he was a wonderful friend. Like I miss my friend. I miss the friendship because I thought about how it was before, um, the feelings that got involved. Like he really was a good friend. Like I miss my friend. So I said, you know, let me reach out and say, yo, I miss you. Like I miss our friendship. Like in spite of everything, in spite of you being selfish and, you know, just, you know, he was extremely selfish, like in the worst way, but I mean, I, you can't change people. And it was just like, yo, but I miss you on the friendship side though. Like we was cool. We laugh, we would take pictures. We just would do it all. But you know, it is, it is what it is. Um, but when I think about it, I don't really think it was necessarily a friendship because the friendship was more beneficial for him. Than it was me, just like the friendships with you know the people prior, it was more beneficial for them. That's another situation where I really didn't do anything to 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 him in particular. He just um, was doing better for himself, um, a lot better from when I had met him. And you know sometimes people we get lost and we smell ourselves, and you know we can forget about those, and that's okay. And you know he's one of those people, and that's what he and that's what he did. Um, but no hard feelings. I wish him the best. I couldn't tell you shit about him. I couldn't tell you nothing about him. Um, and I think it's crazy that when you share an experience with somebody that, um, pe people will just live like you never even existed and you have to be okay with that. So that's how I deal with that. 
Um, so I do have some really, really good people that are in my life too. Um, the three situations that I just spoke on though, they were, um, the ones I could think of off the top of my head in, in most recent. Um, and I, uh, Mm, I don't know. That's just what came to my mind because that's what's on my heart for me to talk about today. So if you are having issues with your friendships and you want to know what to do, or if you don't, if you don't know what to do, I, um, like I said, I wrote them all down on a piece of paper to find out what their functions were. I also, um, learned how to apologize and I reached, like I said, I reached out to people and, um, for if I did felt like they did something wrong to me, I forgave them. They don't know I forgave them, but I forgave them for it because you have to forgive. You have to forgive. I remember one time I said, I don't know how to forgive uh, to one of my friends. I don't know how to forgive. How the freak do I forgive? And she like, ask God. And you know, that's what I did. As you can see, I said something about that in the um, prior video. So, um, yeah. Also, you have to um, understand that everybody won't be able to go with you where you're going and you will outgrow some people and it's nothing wrong with that. And it's absolutely fine because um, we grow and, and, and it's a part of life. And those are things that, that, uh, that happen. Also, um, if you feel like you want to reach out to people that you haven't talked to in a long time or things like that, do it. I recommend that you do it. Like I said, I reached out to people and some was receptive, some weren't. I didn't give a damn because I knew my intentions were good. I didn't do it. When you when you have in, when you have expectations, let's let me say that. I didn't have any expectations reaching out to anyone that I reached out to through my through my growing process. I I just was like, hey, this is what I'm gonna do, this is what I'm gonna say, and yeah, I'm gonna fucking go for it. Um, and that's what I did. So I didn't have any expectations. So when you don't have any expectations, you don't have anything to look forward to. So it's like, cool, I did everything because I wanted to do it. I was trying to get right with God, get right with myself. Forgive people, forgive myself, get over a lot of things because, you know, holding on to grudges and things like that, that shit can cause illnesses. It can block your blessings. It can make you sick. It could, it could do a lot. And, um, the one thing that I worked on was you, I couldn't allow how people treated me or how people dealt with me or didn't deal with me define who I was. I couldn't allow it to change me. So because these people weren't receptive or anyone else that I may meet in the future may not be receptive of anything that I do, I can't say, oh, well, I don't like you no more. I ain't your friend no more. Uh, that, because I, I don't do that. Like, all right, I've had someone tell me, um, well, I don't like you because you did this. Da, da, da. And I said, guess what? I like you, bitch. I like you. And, okay, you don't got like me. But I like you, so cool, that's fine. So, I mean, again, I, once I started to grow and learn me, I also became so calm and made peace with a lot of situations and a lot of friendships and a lot of people that have wronged me or, or, or that I felt have wronged me. But I also want to thank those people because... Without these people and these different things I experienced, I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys. I wouldn't be able to tell you about it. I wouldn't be able to help you get through it. I wouldn't be able to a answer any of the questions that, you know, people do ask me. Um, believe it or not, people call me and we talk about a lot of things. And um, I like to call them clients. <laughs> but people call me and we talk about our things. And I try to get everyone to know that it's all about vibrations. The other thing, too. Um, really quick, like your vibrations. I believe you, you put out in the universe and you attract it back all the time. So, um, when I met certain people too, 
I had to look at where I was in my life when I met these people. Like the like the last person that was I felt like was selfish and inconsiderate and this. I had met them um when like I said on um the prior video in twenty fifteen when I had lost everything. So I met what I had lost, if that makes sense. I met someone with where I was in my consciousness. They met me. I was sitting there and sent that shit out to the universe. And the universe, what the universe do, sent me a selfish, inconsiderate, all about them. When they get on their feet, they don't even know you. That, that's what I That's what I attracted because that's where I was. I was feeling low and feeling like men want shit. All that. So that's what I um, attracted. I believe that you are in control of your life. If you do not like the story or your life, grab the pen and rewrite the book. Because it's never too late. You can always, always, always change, change the book and rewrite the story. And that's what I've decided to do in 2017. I decided to rewrite my book, period. Things that I didn't like in my life, I said, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to change it. Um, I began to be more positive. I think positive about everything now. If you got a negative thought, or if I call you an idea, or you telling me something and I got, and you want to say something negative, I say, I'll talk to you later. Never mind. Should have called you. Like, I literally stay away from everything that's negative. Um, and, you know, that's a little it for this little segment. I may come back and touch touch up on it later. But um, that's that's basically all I have right now. When it comes to uh, friendships and the things that I've dealt with here most recently, um, when my circumstances changed and my situ situations changed, I will say people changed. And um, it, it's unfortunate because now I'm in an amazing space. I'm in an amazing place. Um, I'm more open. I am more, um, I listen more, more than I Yo Gabba Gabba, I listen and I'm at peace and I am very thankful for everything that has happened in my life, the good and the bad, and that's what it's about. You have to be thankful for the good days just as well as the bad days. So when the bad days come, you can praise and be grateful for all the good days. So... I hope this helped. I hope this touched bases. And um, also, it allowed you to know me and some of my friendships and encounters that I've been through as well. Toodles.